My best friend Jesse invited me to join a collab where you get some cheap zoo animal toys, kid bash them together into some kind of crazy, unique zoo monstrosity, and make a piece of terrain to represent their zoo exhibit. And at first, I followed this prompt to the T. I bought a bunch of different animals in various sizes, and I was even inspired to bash one based on my everyday life. But nothing really stuck. I wasn't obsessed with making anything in particular. It's hard to create something if you don't have a spark of an idea that you're passionate about. I was looking for inspiration and I couldn't find it. That is, until I stumbled upon this toy at my local value store. Let's back up. When I was a kid, Donnie Darko hit the theatres, and even though I wasn't allowed, I ended up watching it with a bunch of friends late one night. To this day, one part of the movie stuck with me more than anything else. The nightmarish humanoid rabbit named Frank. Fast forward, years later, I see this monkey toy, the cogwheels in my head started turning, and somehow I began to reimagine the monkey as Frank. Well. A slightly less scary version of Frank? I can do anything I want. My vision for this piece would actually combine elements of Frank with the Donnie Darko character. I wanted the monkey toy to have Donnie's skeleton onesie and the grey hoodie, and then I would replace the monkey's head with a rabbit skull like Frank. But less creepy, more of a fun, maybe even a little bit of a goofy, Bugs Bunny-esque skull. The t-shirt was sculpted with freeform sculpt. I took a few liberties with the source material here. I inverted the colors on his onesie, now just a t-shirt, to make the black bones on a white background. With the colors I had in mind for the rest of the piece, I felt like a black t-shirt would make things look too dark. But I still wanted the whole thing to look cohesive, so I didn't want to introduce any other colors. And as the project started developing, the first real problem I ran into was sculpting the hoodie. Honestly, it was bloody difficult to get it somewhat realistic at this scale. In the future, I think it will take me less time to learn how to sew and just make the clothes out of fabric. The other problem I needed to address was the terrain, which in typical fashion, I had completely forgotten about. I imagined this creature who I decided to call Monkey Darko for obvious reasons, as a type of cryptid, phantom or time traveler, meaning it couldn't be contained in an enclosure. I was racking my brain trying to figure out what to do about this, and while Jesse and I were hanging out, he suggested I use some leftover clay to make a footprint cast, like you see in a Bigfoot documentary. Which was an absolutely brilliant idea, and I just developed that into a little monument that would showcase it. Getting here wasn't easy. I must have run three different ideas past JC before I landed on the Monkey Darko concept. And it may not be exactly what the ugly zoo instructions stated, but I realized that it was too late to stop and make something else. And honestly, I think Monkey Darko is pretty cool. When you try something new creatively, there's a level of vulnerability attached to it. It's like you're opening up to the world, screaming here I am, and it's scary, especially if you're doing a collaboration and you don't follow the guidelines exactly. And as much as I doubt myself sometimes, I feel like art and stories are meant to be told because it's all about someone overcoming their fears and inspiring others to get over theirs, which is not easy. Fear will always be there, but I think you have to ask yourself, are you afraid of making mistakes and creating things that aren't necessarily perfect? Or are you more afraid of letting that fear stop you from making stuff in the first place? Wake up. Wake up. You should like, subscribe and comment. I'll be watching you.